I'm Dr. Sophie Hedgood Hill, and I'm part of a team of researchers who are working on an ESRC Newton funded project on young people's relationship with the food, water, energy nexus. So, what I'm going to be doing is I'll introduce our project and focus on a series of lessons learnt, which I think could be applied to other cities and spaces, and particularly the multiple roles that young people can play. So I frame the presentation in terms of five assumptions about the food to energy nexus, which I think have really been challenged through our research with young people. And then I'll end with drawing some conclusions about the implications of this for environmental and technological change. So first, a brief overview of the wider project that I'm involved in. It's called Reconnect the Nexus, and its our aim is to understand young Brazilians' experiences and participation in the food, water, energy nexus. So we're a relatively large scale, and um, I have written down here multidisciplinary, but not anywhere in like your project. Um, so we're basically geographers and engineers. We're funded by the Newton Fund and CONFAP, one of the Brazilian funding agencies. And we're in the final stages of the project. The majority of the field work's complete, and we're now working on uh, analysis and publications. And the research lead stemmed from two interlinking um, justifications. First, that food, water and energy are strategic development goals in Brazil, and the fact that 42% of Brazil's population, population are under 24. And second, to date, Nexus approaches to understanding resource use and urban metabolism have generally been abstract from everyday processes like eating, drinking, producing, learning <coughs> and wasting. And we found contemporary research on the nexus paid little attention to the diverse understandings and experiences and forms of participation that constituted the nexus. So the nexus in everyday life, particularly lived by young people, um, is, the, is our focus. Just a note on the case study region. It's a strategic location between um, the two important metropolitan areas of Brazil, Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro. It's economically significant and it's a socially diverse region from urbanised cities with richer and poorer populations to a more traditional kind of rural communities in the coastal area. But although our focus is on this kind of in-between space between the two um, cities, some of our key stakeholder interviews did take the, the headquarters of food, water and energy companies that are active across the region, as well as government departments whose work governs um, the distribution of these resources across the region, and also the NGOs who are lobbying for better and more equitable access. So in terms of the data we collected, we conducted in-depth qualitative research with 40 young uh, people, aged between 10 and 24, from diverse social and economic backgrounds. And I'm going to just talk a little bit about the methods in a second, because that's very much influenced um, kind of our understanding of the nexus. 64 key professionals um, took part in qualitative interviews, um, focusing on the production and the governance of food, water and energy, and a baseline survey of, at the moment, 3,937 young people. We're aiming for 5,000. Uh, we're going to close the survey at the end of May, um, so field workers are making the final push um, to get to 5,000. And then finally, a nexus. So the Nexus Challenge, we invited people, young people, anywhere in the world to submit a, a three-minute video on their interactions with food, water and energy. I'm not talking about that today, but it was another aspect of our, of our project. So the qualitative methods we used um, that I'm going to frame this presentation with is based on um, three methods. Um, a mapping the Nexus exercise, an in-depth interview and an app-mediated survey. So participants were asked to use an app for a two-day period to collect data on their everyday uses of an experience and interactions with food, water and energy. So that could have been on their route to school, cooking at home, um, eating in the canteen at college, um, wherever they felt that they uh, wanted to take part in the app. And then we used that app um, data to then um, have an in-depth interview and do this mapping, uh, mapping the Nexus exercise. Um, where we used their app data to then, um, they then represented that in any way that they would like to. And as you'll see in the remaining slides, this Nexus mapping approach enabled us to visualise young people's complex, fraught and really entangled relationships with food, water and energy. 
So now I'm starting on the five assumptions about the food, water, and energy nexus that have really been challenged. So first, the assumption that food, water, and energy nexus is just about food, water, and energy. Of course it's not. So this visual mapping exercise highlights the real complexity of young people's entangled spatial materialities of food, water, and energy, which really stretch beyond the nexus triad, involving transport, infrastructures, employment, education. And this complexity is well captured in the nexus. The web shown on the screen, which is on the screen, um, is produced by a 15-year-old male, and this is just one example of this. So the web's highlighted other key actors in the nexus, from family to money, whether that's um, its presences or absences, and technological mediators such as filtros, so water filters. In the accompanying narrative to this nexus web, the participant describes his family's um, choices, the, the choices that they have to make when they um, don't have enough money to buy food. He explains that they can't afford to buy special food. Um, so when they have money, they only buy the necessary food. So the Brazilian staples of rice, beans, oil, um, and pasta. In one of his um, notes on, on this web, he titles Necessary Food. And he meticulously draws the basic foodstuffs stocked up on a super supermarket shelf. Now, I say this is in-depth qualitative research. Some of these webs took four hours. Um, so it's a really time-consuming uh, methodology, but really <coughs> worth it. And the family were really key in young people's experiences of the nexus. We found families to bridge the gap in the nexus through caring when times were tough. And this was also extended to neighbours and to re other, um, also religious faces. But then we also found that the family was also a weakness in the nexus. When families experience tough social issues, including alcoholism and, and drugs. So these webs and the accompanying narratives show how food, water and energy is woven into everyday life, um, which really complicated our understanding of the nexus. So the second assumption is that the city is a key space for environmental and technological change. The visual maps and the data that was presented gave an acute sense of the multi-scalar intricacies of the nexus. Many young participants articulated their understanding and experience of the nexus as beyond the city. And in this nexus web, the young person, like many of our other participants, they, they drew um, Brazil as a country, showing as the larger scale issues which extended beyond their towns and their cities. For example, large-scale nexus threats such as flooding. Many made reference to a prolonged water shortage, often referred to as the 2014 water crisis, to point out the precarious nature of Sao Paulo's resource dependence on the river basin and the rural-urban connections and conflicts um, surrounding water. The third assumption being that young people's experiences of the nexus are dislocated from politics. And this was far from the case. Many of our young, young participants were overtly political in their expressions of the nexus. So with respect to water, for example, young people's watery relations and articulations were framed in, in light of, um, of the contemporary Brazilian political economy, water management, the water crisis, and other, and other significant environmental risks. Brazil's current political climate, and at the time of the research with the impeachment of the former president, and the scandals and the investigations into public and private life, these, um, these featured prominently in young people's accounts. And for the subset of young people that we worked with, we found that social media um, was increasingly cited as an important realm for political debate around um, the nexus. And yes, it may be that different young people have different kind of access to social and educational resources, but there was certainly an argument in our data that social media was en enabling them and their families um, to make more informed choices um, in their everyday lives. Maybe it's not that. Um, and just another point on, back on the other slide, actually, was that uh, when they were doing their Nexus maps, um, many would write government in big letters, corruption in big letters, and surrounded by words such as hunger, little money, unemployment, to really highlight the kind of the intersections of politics um, with the nexus. So this is about 
Assumption four, nexus threats, um, challenges and system processes are critical at the macro scale. So as I said at the beginning, much of the scholarly work on understanding resource use and urban metabolisms has generally been abstract from everyday processes, which, is, um, which tend to emphasize the critical nature of understanding nexus threats at the macro scale. However, in our research, the body was a key component of young people's framing of the nexus. Young people were articulate about how their bodies were a key actor in processing, in managing, in negotiating, in sensing, in <coughs> learning about the nexus. And visualisations of their own bodies formed a key part of these diagrams. Some were simple stick figures, um, but then we also had really intricate drawings of the gut and internal organs, which is what this, this picture was, and their role in food processing and energy production. Um, uh, so young people told us how their senses were attuned to monitoring nexus threats, from drinking water quality to river pollution. The quote on the screen describes a young person talking about the chlorinated water in the city and goes on to talk about the filtro in her home. So it's vital that nexus research pays attention to the micro scale, impact on bodies and how different bodies manage and negotiate nexus threats. Then finally, assumption five, in that young people are unaware about technological processes of the nexus. This was certainly not the case. Young people were able to clearly articulate their knowledge of flows of food, of water, and of energy, from their homes across cities to processing plants. And often young people would draw intricate, inter, intricate process diagrams and graphs to show flows of water through hydrological systems, and the transportation of food. In the survey, we asked young people how they would gauge their understanding of the origins of water. And with the caveat that the survey is not yet closed, 56% of current participants said that they understood and 45% knew how their water was treated. However, just over half said that despite having this knowledge, they still want to know more about water issues in their city. So on the one hand, we found that young people were acutely aware of these technological processes, but they do call for key nexus stakeholders to work more closely with young people in conveying these technological processes, and importantly, the nexus threats and how they can be um, worked towards and overcome. So in summary then, I've presented five assumptions about the nexus which we feel have been challenged through our in-depth research with young people. We've shed light on the multi-scalar intersections of the nexus from the body to the cupboard, to the classroom, to the neighborhood, the state and the transnational. This research draws attention to the entanglements of food, water and energy with places, with time, with movement, objects, materialities that shape young people's use of and access to resources. It enriches theorizations of the nexus with not only a multi-scalar, but also a multi-temporal approach, with time being a really key element in the nexus. I haven't really talked about that, but that's what our team is also talking about. So it's these intersections between the macro flows of materials and people with the micro attention to connections and also disconnections <coughs> with different scales of social and political responsibilities that we're exploring pathways to um, just urban living. And we've shown that research into the food, water, energy nexus is complicated. And it's complicated because of the diverse actors involved. And we also think it's important not just to focus on kind of planning and design processes when we think about child and youth friendly cities. It's trying to get closer to the entangled nature of the nexus. Um, and the everyday implications of that, that brings us some steps closer um, to thinking about the good city. And we've shown that environmental and technological change shouldn't just focus on the city. It's, it's an attention to that multi-scalar is needed when dealing with nexus threats. And then very finally, young people are so often left out of conceptions of the good city and work on social justice. But we've shown that their bodies, their knowledges, and their political potential are really critical in everyday articulations of the nexus.